Huh? All right. All right, well, good morning, good morning. Ooh, man, I'm telling you. Well, we had some extra kick on the light, though. That's good. All right, before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the precious holy name of Jesus again to thank you for this day. It is a beautiful, sunshiny day outside. Still a little chilly for my taste, but it's still a nice day, and I thank you for that. It seems like lately I've got to find a little of something to complain about, but that's the, uh, forgive me of that. But as uh, we get ready to go forward um, to uh, worship you through a, a word, um, God, I just pray your help. Jesus, I pray that you pray for me. Holy Spirit, I pray you speak through me. And that uh, this will all lift up the name of Jesus and draw men into Father. Um, again, I stand in the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish things whereunto it is sent. Again, I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. Um, I love you, Holy Spirit. Help me now preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are on a message. Uh, we are on a sermon series. It's called uh, Making a Difference Where You Are. Are and now we're we're using uh, um, the story of Daniel and uh, we had a little bit about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and um, we're using them as well. Um, and so in that, uh, um, I pray that you'll kind of uh, pay attention to it. Go back to some of the the messages before this one and to catch out because like week one we talked about uh, making a difference where you are by standing out. You know where you are, um, and then that, and then uh, the week after that, week two was uh, standing up for what you believe in, and then uh, last week was a really God interrupted it, and He just wanted to deliver a message about um, life, standing up for life, um, because the unborn it cannot stand up for themselves. Um, so that was His word last week that He was uh, He wanted to do that one, and then uh, th- this week here we're going to stand on, uh, we're going to do the. The story of standing strong where you are. Um, it's uh, making a difference where you are by standing strong. And we're using, uh, we're going to be preaching from uh, the scriptures of Daniel 6. Daniel 6. Uh, how many of you remember those stories back when you were a little kid, the flannel graph little stories, you know, and they, they took that little flannel graph and the teacher would put up the little stories of Noah and the ark, you know, or Joshua and the coat of many colors. And they, you know, they would switch characters out really. Uh, and even Daniel and the lions then, you know, and it kind of maybe looked like Daniel was sleeping, you know, it was, uh, oh, he's thrown in the lions and he's sleeping on the lions and he, they were his pillow and stuff like that that you know um but but uh those stories of of uh of those times ago um the so the stories are true but some of the characteristics of how they happen i would like to say that they we, they were just softening them up of, of being stories for children uh, but to really think about them and read the scriptures of how everything went down um is kind of just mis- misleading a little bit um lions of laying your head down a lion mm, I don't think so. I remember when I was a young boy, um, and uh, we, my mom and dad took us to the zoo, and we were just walking through, and we came to the one area where they have the, uh, the, the, the tigers and the lions, and they had this breed, it was called a tiglon. Um, really kind of pretty, uh, I, I thought it was a lion at first, but they, they showed kind of how if you kind of look into the fur, you can kind of see in the fur towards the backside of it, you know, like a, a, a color of stripes in the lion's coat. Uh, and uh, But as uh, as we were standing there, and I just thought it was so cool, and he had this big old glass, you got a bar there, and a, a big old glass there that they can't, you know, you just look at them, they look at you, they can walk back and forth in front of you and things like that. But this one here was just uh, lying there, Just it was a a, a female uh, tiglon and and my mom and dad they just and brothers and sisters they, they they just kept walking on a little bit farther but I stayed you know and I, I just kind of was just like staring at this 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 lion you know and I'm like looking intently into its eyes and caught and it caught my eyes and so in that we were just staring at each other just staring at each other and staring at each other and all of a sudden out of nowhere Boom! It's, it jumped up and had his four and his two paws up on the glass, standing up like this, and, and, and scared the living dickens out of me. I'm, 
I'm running past my dad. My dad's, what's the matter? I said, it's coming out the cage. It's coming out the cage. You know, my dad, he turns around and walks back. He wants to see it standing up, you know. And, and uh, it was a, woo, I'm telling you, it was a scary, scary thing. Uh, as many of you know, I'm not very much of a cat person. I, I'm not too uh, fond of cats, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, I love lions because of their power. And also they are outside. And so when they do their business, they do their business outside. And you, you don't have to clean it up, you know. That's <laughs> it. Don't stink up the house. No, uh, but they are very powerful animals. Um, and then that uh, it, it kind of puts some perspective of the the respect them and their power, um, and, and um, just really kind of want to kind of bring that reality of lions. You don't really want to mess with a lion, even if it's been fed and it's just in a cage and it's all good and they grew up around people and they're you know, like that. That thing still was coming through that glass. I don't care what you say about it. If it could get through there, it was going to, you know. So in that, we, we look at the Daniel and this uh, 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 story that we're going to be talking about, Daniel and the lion's den. Um, it, we'll go back to where he was uh, first. Uh, Daniel served under King Nebuchadnezzar. We, that was in our previous stories. And, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar kind of, um, he's moved out of the picture. He passes away. And then we get this new guy um, um, whose name is King Darius. He's a new king. And in that, uh, he's setting things up in the kingdom a little bit different. You know, uh, he sets up the, uh, uh, what would you call it? Uh, uh, called a uh, 120 set, sat traps, which are, um, as it's described when you look it up, it is a, um, a like a uh, guardians of the kingdom. He sets up 120 of them. And as, as the, the guardians of the kingdom, he sets up three guys over those 120. So it's almost like a period made that they you know that of uh, a ranking you know almost like a military idea you know of how that they can um protect the kingdom but also only it, it cuts down on the responsibility of you know you you're you only report to so and so and that you know kind of thing and so as we we pick up that uh, st the story in daniel chapter six um Verses 1, we're going to pick this story up and we're going to look at, see where Daniel is in this situation of his life. Uh, I believe here in this part of the story, um, before when he first came in with Nebuchadnezzar, let's say he in this point of, of this story, he's 80 years old. So, you know, when you was a kid and you heard the stories of Daniel in the lion's den, it was like a picture of a young guy laying with the lions, but that's not really true. He's 80 years old in this part of the story. So in that, uh, we're going to pick up Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to read through 3 right now. Uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. And it, and it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So here's the picture. Hold on one second. Huh? There was an echo back around and it was, it was bothering me. Um, Daniel has uh, set himself up because of his character and that how we talked about how he made his mind up long ago, like when they were going to pull him into when he was just a teenager, because again, it was about 15 years old when he came into um, being uh, working for the kingdom of, of, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar. And then that he established there his, his uh, godly uh, 
walk with God, he's going to say, I'm not going to defile my body. You can change my name, but in my body, this is the temple of God. In that, I'm not going to defile that. He already made his mind up about some things in his life. And so in that, that, that distinguished him and also his, uh, his ability to speak truth and boldness to the king, um, which in that, it seems as though they could not find any fault in Daniel in that what it set him, it set him such at a precedent above all the else that that, that King Darius, he said, I want to make him second in command. He only answers to me, the king. And then that, usually when you're promoted to something like that, it usually kicks off some jealousy in some other people's lives. And that's what happens here. The other two guys and some other guys that look at seeing Daniels getting promoted, that they are like, hmm, I don't like that. I, I, we don't like Daniel being that. We want that position. And so in that, they get very, very jealous. And you know what? Jealousy really kicks off in a lot of people. And that green monster of jealousy ends up kicking up something but, you know, you would think being promoted would be a good thing. And sometimes it's just not a good thing. It brings more trouble than what you might be worth. It's just a thought. <laughs> so Jaden's about, it's about the money. He said, if you're getting paid more, then, uh, then it's a... But, you know, can you handle the headaches of somebody always trying to um, cause you trouble? Are you, always, uh, are you okay with the, the, the changing of, of some things in that? So, three truths to help you stand strong in the promotion or the issues of life that you're going, down, going through. First, I'm going to look at, when God raises you up, expect people to try to tear you down. Always. It's just something that you just need to know. I believe that. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen the, the, the progressing of, of, of moving forward and and prospering God's hand of blessings on you, and then that uh, that when you're standing in a position of, of an authority and a, or a boss, and you're running things, and God's hands of of uh, protection and and blessings are on you, that that as you get the raises or you get bumped up or your title changes, there's other that look look over your shoulder and like they they get this jealousy and they they will do everything they they can to put you down. Um, a lot of times when the people are, you know, they think that, uh, they, they think it would be most excited, you would be most excited, they're the most jealous. You know, the most, that, 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 that you think that you should be, they should be for you. And really are, they just, they're turning their backs against you because what you have, they want and they can't get it right now. Maybe some of you are just, um, it's, it, maybe you remember back when you got excited about Jesus when you first got saved and you were just so thrilled and some of the older Christians are like, oh, you'll get over it, you know, and they just like kind of put some slams on you, you know, because your, your zeal for Jesus is, you know, so fiery and they're just like in this comfort zone of like, you know, eh, I've seen a lot of bad stuff happen. And so they kind of lost a little faith, you know, their prayers didn't get, get answered about something, you know, somebody didn't get healed or the, the, the job didn't go through or they lost something else in their, in their life, you know, so their faith has been wavered. And so in that they still believe Jesus. Jesus is Lord and, and they're going to die and go to heaven. That Yeah, they believe that, but that fire that you have, they're just kind of like, eh, you'll get over it. You'll see. Life happens and, you know, it, you'll just, you'll see. I, I kind of, kind of, that, that's kind of a big thing for a lot of people. Maybe it's that God speaks to you very clearly about something more con more controversial than others, you know. Maybe it's the idea of getting out of debt. God has put it on your heart, and you start this journey of uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just eat simple. I'm not gonna do out. I'm not going out to eat, and and I'm gonna save my money and pour, put it towards a bill to pay off a bill. Or or maybe he's saying, you know what, uh, the next car you have. You want to get, you know, let's not make car payments where you're going to end up paying 5 to 15 percent more for the car than what you originally uh, what it's worth. That you're going to start making payments into a savings account. So that's going to put some money in also towards it because you're going to get interest on it until you then you get to what you want uh, uh, set aside and you pay cash for the car. And people are going to talk to you and down you for stuff like that. 
Or maybe you want to homeschool your children because you realize, you know what, my, my kids at, 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 in the public school, you know, nothing against you public school teachers, but a lot of the legislation is coming upon you. It's, 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 gonna, it's making it hard for your job if you're standing as a Christian. You know, are you going to continue to stand in that and work in that and teach those things that are against God? Where parents are making decisions to say, you know what, I don't like what they're teaching. They're teaching my kids, you know, about this gender stuff. And they're teaching my kids that it's okay to have sex outside of marriage. And it's okay to do that. The parents would say, you know what, we're going to pull our kids out. Of, we're going to homeschool them. And that people will they'll slam you and put you down and make fun of you. But are you willing to make a stand? To make a difference? And what God has laid in your heart. You know, it's almost like in um, Australia and New Zealand and um, the United Kingdom, they have this thing that's called the, the uh, poppy syndrome. You know, where they come in at the, and the, the poppy plant is where they cut it down real low and cut it out. It's almost like for us in America, we kind of use it as the crab you know, thing, the crab demonstration. I, 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 use, I use quite a bit, especially with the youth. You know, when you, when you, uh, when you, when you go crab, Catching crabs, you have a bucket. You put one crab in there, you got to put a lid on it. Because the crab will crawl out of the bucket and get away and escape. But if you have two or more crabs in the bucket, the, the crabs, you don't have to put no lid on it. Because here's what happened. The crabs are down there and they'll see one trying to escape and they'll say, oh, no, 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 no. They're going to do their little clip, you know, crab things. You know, go Ooh, and grab you by the leg and pull you back down in the bucket. So none of the crabs ever escape because they each are pulling each other down all the time. You have like, oh, no, you're going to get out. And they pull it down. Well, I'm going to get out. And, you know, the next thing you know, another one's pulling them down. And that's a lot of times what we are here in, in our own culture of, of people is that we're always trying to pull somebody down because we're down and life is horrible and bad things have happened to us. And our perspective is all skewed of what God really wants for us. And in that, we, we're not happy for whoever God is blessing at the time. We're, mis we're, we're playing misery and trying to pull them down as well. You see, when God raises you up, expect people to tear you down. How are you going to behave? How are you going to act when they do this? You see, Daniel in Daniel 6, verse 4, we're going to pick up. This is what happens. At this, the administrators of the satraps tried to figure grounds, find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corrupt in him because he was truth, trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charging against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good testimony about Daniel that they knew that if the only thing they can get against this guy is as if there's something about the law of God. If we can find something to turn this that we can get this guy, we can knock him off his pedestal or the pedestal that he was put on, this little this second in command, and we can step in his place. That how, in, how is it in, in your life that maybe that, that God is asking you, when people look at you, what do they see? Do they see the status on your, your, your uh, social media, a Christian, but when they get around you, it's the... The, the language that you listen to, the, the, that, that comes out of your mouth? Or, or is it that, that when they see or hear you and you don't have no wisdom of, of God's Scripture speaking? Even if you knew the stories and say, well, I know what God would do in this situation because this story comes to my mind. You know, jo Joseph, you know, when, the, when his brothers threw him, in, you know, threw him in the pit, you know, and then he was sold into slavery, he stayed faithful to his God. When bad things happen, what do you, how are you going to behave? How are you going to, how are you going to move and do things in, in, in your life? 
It's almost like Daniel was like in a, uh, he's almost like in a, a, a hunger game, nowadays hunger game. You know, it's like, uh, kill or be killed. What are you going to do, Daniel? These guys are after you. They're after, because the normal, the normal of a human being is if you're coming after me, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm to protect myself and I'm going to take you down first. That's just how we behave. The normal corporate businessman or woman, that's how they, they, they act. You're in my way or you're a problem of my way moving forward or moving up and getting a, a promotion or getting a raise. I'm going to do what I can to take you down, belittle you, get you demoted or get you fired. That's just how they work. If you don't know that, take note of it. When you get up into that kind of business or you're headed in that way, take note of it. How are you going to, you need to set your mind now, if that kind of stuff happens to you, how are you going to behave? What are the things you're going to, to um, um, come out and, and you're going to react to it? How are you going to react to that? If you, see, because if you're not ready to face opposition for your obedience to God, you are not ready to be used by God. How much more we need to be ready because now the harvest is here, but the labors are few. That's why I just was really laid on my heart about the title of this, this, uh, this sermon series. It's to make a difference where you are because there's people all around you. Things are happening. There's a move of God. Uh, the Spirit of God is upon the earth and it's, and it's moving around. And in that, it's causing people to think in their mind, what if? This happens to me. Where will I go? What, if I die, if I die of the corona, or if I die under the one world order, if I die in this, if I die if Antifa comes to my city, if I die if, if, if this happens, if, what happens? What if happens if China attacks America? What if? And people, this fear is coming over them, and the thought of death now is true, just like it happened back in 9-11. This move of God happened back in 9-11 that every church for weeks and weeks and weeks was full because of the fear of war and the fear of death. The fear of my son will have to go to, they, they might start to draft up and my son might have to go off to war and fight these guys. If you're not ready to face the opposition for, for the, your obedience to God, then you're just not ready to be used by God. And the whole purpose of this is to, to, to probe your heart and probe your mind. Are you ready to be used by God? Because you're needed. God wants to use you. So, back to these uh, two guys or these guys that were kind of just like um, coming up with this idea of like, all right, how can we, we got to find a way to make a law. See, again, that's the other thing I want to make this point of. You could take all these Old Testament um, of issues that the Israelites always had, and it is that always legislations, laws that came through a king that made things bad for the people of God. Here we are, get ready. We have a, a, we have a man in office that is pushing legislation. He's going to get, and, and, and it's coming through the Democratic Party. Sorry, but that's just the way it's happening. And they're pushing for a one world order. They're pushing to push us towards socialism, towards, uh, towards the, that kind of lifestyle and making laws that is going to try to take our rights, our freedom of speech, take our guns, take our constitutional uh, 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 abilities to live here as a free nation and take those away from us. And if you, you if you don't, just hold on. If you think I'm full of crap, just hold on. Keep your eyes open and watch it happen before your own eyes because that's what's coming. We're going to be set up like China. That's the whole goal of these guys that are up there pushing the legislation just like what's happening, what's going to happen right here as I read this story. That these two guys get up to King Darius and they start to butter King Darius up. Hey, yo, King, man. Woo, nice Nikes, dude. Man, where'd you get those, man? Those are nice. They just are buttering him up. And they slide one in there. Hey, King, you know what would be kind of cool, King? It'd be kind of cool if you make a law for the next 30 days that nobody, uh, nobody's to bow down before any of their other gods that they only bow down before you, King Darius. 
You see, the problem with man is that man has an issue with pride. I don't care if you're the bestest, best guy in the whole wide world. I included in this that we have pride issues. That if you push the right buttons, you kick that pride in us, you'll kick it way high, and you'll get a lot of stuff out of us that you want. And, and to be a king, because every king back in those days, they all had a God complex. You push the right b- buttons on a king, and you can get him up there thinking he's God. He's controlling everything. What he says, you cut your head off, head gets cut off. Bless you, you be blessed. Throw you in prison, because you know, he, he's got control. And then that, he takes these guys seriously. You know what? That's a great idea. All right, for the next 30 days, I pass a law, had it written, put it in the law. You're not allowed to bow down before any gods or pray to any gods except for me, King Darius. And he put the law in the past. There you go. Your first legislation is take your freedom of worshiping your God away from you. What's that? What's that? Is it HR 5? Or this uh, freedom uh, um, thing that's just, they're just trying to pass through the Senate because it was passed through the, the House and they're pushing it through the Senate? They push it through the Senate. Biden's going to sign it, and it's a law. And it's going to take our ability as a federal across the whole United States as churches, and it's going to really put a pressure on us to shut our mouths. Oh, you're so... Fu- go, go read it. Listen to it. I don't care if you're a Chinaman, a, a Hispanic or black, or white, whatever it is that in your, your following of, of getting gathering as a church to go after Jesus and God, it's, it's, it, it's going to cause, it's, it's, the law is going to be changed to shut us down. They already did a good job for a year now by passing the, the, the mask and the no get together for worship what a more time that we need as each other to pray for each other than through a pandemic. Yes, we can still be saved. Just like, man, I remember this pastor down in, in Concord, Pastor Brodney, down in uh, Broadus. I, I loved him when it was like flu season. The first thing you get up in the pulpit, he'd get up there, all right, everybody, it's flu season. Everybody, all right? Listen, we're going to, no hogging necks. And no shaking hands. You want to touch elbows. All right. And make sure you wash your hands and cover your mouth when you cough. I mean, it shouldn't have to be preached or told to people how to do that so, so they don't, the whole congregation don't come down with the flu. But that's really what needed to be done all across America is for the pulpit to come up there and say, you want to wear a mask? You want to protect yourself? Wear a mask. Okay, but we're still going to gather together. We're going to worship our God. We're going to trust Him as Psalms 91 that it's going to fall to the, le- that it's going to, fall to the right of us and, and 10,000 to the left of us, but it's not coming near me. But instead, we bowed down to the government and said, okay, it's going to kill us. You know, we're going to die. And we let fear conquer us. There's many churches that did not close and they stood their grounds. And God's going to bless them tremendously for that stand. But where are we now as a people? We're going to continually bow down to the government and say to that we're, we're going to bow down to them because what this law is going to say you can't pray to your God anymore for 30 days. You have to you have to pray to King Darius. You have to bow down to him and him alone. See, now there's three options that Daniel's going to have now. See, he's second in command. He's, everybody's watching his lead. What is Daniel going to do? He's the one we know that follows God, Jehovah. Yeah, we know that. What is Daniel going to do? He could do this. Option number one. He could just stop praying. He could say, look, God, this law just passed. I'm going to have to be quiet for about 30 days. I've served you for 80 years of my life. It's been good. I'm just trying to keep the peace. Everybody's watching me. So I just, I, I, it's better for me to be alive and to help everybody out because I'm second in command. I can put my input in there and I could do this. But I'm just going to be quiet. I'm not going to pray to you for about 30 days. Okay? Or he could have did this.
Hey, Dan, are you over there praying? Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not praying. No, no. And just told out lied about it and just pray and pray in his closet, you know, and hide in the bedroom, pulled his drapes closed and did his praying that way. Or the third choice is he doesn't change a thing knowing he's going to die. He's not going to be boastful and brought out. I'm going to pray now. It's my, I told you earlier I prayed three times a day. I'm going to pray now. No, he's not boasting about it. He just, he just stayed on his routine. It's to say, what is your choice? Mm. 30 days. 30 days. His choice. What are they going to do? Well, you know what Daniel said? He said, I'm going to stay faithful. He didn't boast about it, but he did it. So, how, how did he have such an audacious faith? How did Daniel have such amazing faith to stand strong in such um, an overwhelming, you're going to die position? You do this or you're going to die. You do this or you're going to die. Could you imagine? I mean, it's, it's that way in China right now. You, you get together as a church, we put you in prison. Many of the people in, in, in China that follow Jesus Christ has spent years in jail because of their gathering together as Christians following Jesus Christ. Are you willing to say because of the legislation that could be passed to still stand and say, I'm going to church. I'll, I'll probably be in jail next week, so I'll see you in about a month. You need to think about this now. It's a now situation. This is, we went from, no, it can never happen to us. To, Ten years ago, no, it can never happen to us. To it's a now that it is. We are in the same position as our brothers and sisters in China. And if you're still going to blow smoke in, your, in my face and say, no, it's never going to happen, you just hold on, we'll see some more laws pass. And it ain't been a hundred days yet, we've already seen some ridiculous stuff happen to destroy our country. Hold on, we're seeing a king just like the past of the Old Testament. Have we not seen, have we not seen the, the, the plagues? Yeah, the pandemic was a plague because it brought death. You follow some of the other plagues. Water turned to, to blood. That one happened a few years ago. I've already talked about this stuff. But it seems as though some of my brothers and sisters are just not taking it serious and you're still living in this, this position of not being used by God and you're taking the relationship. This is almost like a bad marriage. Where the marriage is not coming together and there's no reconciliation because there's no communication. Where there's no communication, there's no relationship. So in that, I would say to you, is like, do you really have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Or are you walking around with this fake title on your, uh, on your, on your, uh, uh, your Instagram or your Facebook or your Twitter account that you're a Christian? Because again, there's going to be ten brides that are saying they're Christians. But only five of them go with the bridegroom when he comes. And the other five get left because they're playing around doing something else and there's no, really, there's no seriousness about them. Are you going to be the five that's going to be left? So how does it, how was his face so strong that he's saying, I'm going to, just, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing? This is where it, it, it comes in at. Kneeling to pray is what gives you the strength to stand. Daniel, every time he went to pray, he knelt on his knees to his God and prayed. Daniel 6, verse 10 says this. Daniel 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. You see, 
Listen, 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 listen. He's doing what he's always done. So let's ask you this question. Do you take ever, do you ever take the posture of getting on your knees and bowing to your God, to your Savior? Posture is everything. It's respect. It's knowing of your love for Him. It's that you are not walking around, I'm entitled. I got saved. I got the blood on me. I'm entitled. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. You know, because that's what a lot of this generation is walking around right now. They think that that's because I'm this person. I'm entitled to it. You have that. I should have that too. And not taking into consideration, how long have they worked to get what they got? How long did they turn around and, and go through what they went through to be where they are? Man, there's many pastors that have been in the position of that they are in a place that they are being used by God. But you know what? How much sacrifice did they give to get where they are? That God has just blessed them. You know what? You sacrificed that for me and for the kingdom and for Jesus Christ. Whoop! I'm going to bless you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to put you here. I'm going to take you there. It's not really too, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's their life is saying, my life is not mine, it's yours, and I'm going to give it, it, it all to you. The Daniel saying, you know what, three times a day, I'm on my knees, and I'm going to sacrifice that, I'm going to give that to God, and I'm going to pray to Him three times a day. Again, it's a mindset. What are you going to do when it comes? You need to make up your mind right now, right now, what are you going to do when it comes? Whether it comes this week, five years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now. He's 80 years old. He has spent his life since he, before he was even 15, okay? They, they get their, they go, they go through their manhood at 12. The Jewish tradition of that. So our, our, our first response to a trial should never be to panic, but always to pray. What are you doing when, the, when, the, when it hits the fan? Are you getting on Facebook and just blabbering all over there? Are you calling somebody up? Oh, no, this is happening to me. This is bad to me. This, is the, oh, this happened or whatever. Or are you on your knees praying about the situation? God, I don't know, it's just, I just need to come to you first on this because this is happening to me and I'm just going through this. And, or maybe, I, maybe you just, you know, this person treated you wrong and you're instead of you're going and calling your best friend and blabbing it all over to them, you know, that you're going to God, look, this has happened between me and this person. Uh, this, is, I, I, this part was bad on me, and, but the rest of it is on them, you know. And so I don't know what to do. Lord, please help us in this situation. You see, Daniel didn't announce it about all this stuff. He just went straight to God and stayed faithful in his prayer time. Does not his word say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto you? But you see, as he humbled himself and knelt, knelt before God Almighty, he really showed, you know what? I am ready to die for my God. Many of us are in a position, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. That's why the fears come over us because of the corona. How is it that the fear of, of our government, when it comes and puts the hammer down, they're trying to pass that law, no guns, you know, what if they, what if they really turn around and put, push it to the law, to the extreme of the law, that they go house to house because they got a listing of you purchasing guns, and so that because of your registration of that gun, they come into your house for that gun. Oh, that'll never happen. Hold on. Hold on. I hope it doesn't. But unless God does not get in there and get involved and in, 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 in change some things, that's how Germany, that's how, that's how the Nazis, they went after the Jews. That's how they got, they got, that's how they got to them. 
And in that series of time, six million Jews died. They died. Because of the legislation that was passed down through the German government. And that's exactly what's happening here in the United States of America. And if you want to just get, kind of just say, oh, that's not going to, Biden wouldn't do all that, you better just, uh, you better sit back and quit. Listen to whatever nonsense that's blowing smoke in your face. Go look for it yourself. Go search through the stuff yourself. Because I'm telling you, he is very bold about what he's doing and what he stands for. He lied about so many things that he was going to do and that unity stuff. He's a liar. He's just absolutely telling, he's not telling the truth about this stuff. Look at his actions. He's just eliminating jobs. He was wanting to build America up, is what he said when he was trying to get everybody to vote for him. He just eliminated jobs, put them, opening the borders, letting criminals and everything else come across there. Still standing against God and, and, um, and, and, and killing babies. Turning his back on Israel by getting involved with all Israel's enemies. God's Word says if you bless Israel, you will be blessed. And I'm telling you what, if he finances one daggone thing against Israel, man, we, and he's our leader, so we as a country, mark it down, we as a country are going to pay for that. Just like we're paying for the killing of all these babies for abortion. You think our actions are to continually go without no repercussion, no consequences? I'm telling you what, when I do something wrong, man, God gets me. And I've done quite a bit. I try not to, but I'm just, sometimes I'm just not very smart about some things. And God gets me. You see, Daniel could stand before men because he knelt before his God. He was bold before what the people, but before the king of saying, you know what? My God comes first. My God comes first. My Jesus comes first. And he got that strength because he knelt before God. And he was able to stand boldly before men, other men and even a king because of that. So when you do right by God, you can always trust God with the results. So what happens was, they snitched on Daniel. And Daniel had to go before King Darius, and man, that made King Darius so upset. It made him so upset because that was his best man. He's like, I don't know what I was thinking, you know. It's almost like a conversation like that. Uh, Daniel, please. It, it, upset the Dan it upset the King Darius so much that after he sent Daniel, because the, 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 the law stated for death was to be thrown into the lion's den. And the lions were known for, they would just eat it, you know, because they didn't feed them anything else. So if they, if they had, had nobody to eat in a couple of days, whatever came down there, they got them. So in that, they found that, that there was a way that, you know, I'm sorry, i got to obey the law, you got to go into the lion's den. But it messed up King Darius so bad that it said that he went away and he fasted and he prayed for Daniel. Imagine the consequences that he's sitting back going, man, I regret that consequence. I regret, I regret, I regret passing that law. But then that, we pick this up in Daniel 6.22 says this, And my God sent His angels, and He shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in His, in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, Your Majesty. The king was overjoyed, gave orders to lift Daniel up out of the den, and when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wounds was found on him because he had trusted in his God. So Daniel was thrown in the lion's den and not a mark was on him. Not a mark was on Daniel. So in that, King Darius was just so overwhelmed with joy that 
in that he passed a law that everybody was to fear the God of Daniel, that they were to trust and, and they were to, to, to um, um, uh, reverence the God of Daniel. See, that's where the, the issue is about history. See, people, they, they, they want to, like the Democrats now, they want to take out stuff of history of America or history period, you know, of a lot of things. And, and it's to say that, look, history is to teach us. That's why this, the Old Testament is so important to continue to read and to look from and learn from because history will repeat itself. And this, this is, we're living right now in a time that we're acting just like the Israelites. In, in that several, there's several stories in there that called them stiff neck or, or in that that they were rebellious or, or stubborn. You know, and that's really descriptions of the American people that call themselves Christians right now. Because we're living and saying that this is okay, but it's sin against the Holy God. And it's written right there. But in this, Daniel was, at, he was saved, not a mark on him. Not a mark on him. And then the two guys that they um, tricked King Darius were thrown in the pit and they were killed instantly. Because I guess the angel that protected Daniel might have been tired from holding them, angel, them lying back. I don't know. But, you know, I don't know. But to say to you today, Can you make a difference where you are? Are you ready for the opposition that's coming? Are you, are, you, are you in a position right now? Maybe you are in an opposition right now. Maybe you're going through some things right now in your life. But the opposition is to say to you, you have to stand firm of what God's Word teaches. Can't waver on it. When you can do that, you will be ready to be used by God. And God wants to use you right now. He wants to prepare you for what is to come. Because no matter what I see around me, if it be more years yet to come, that still, I, I, I was reading Revelations the other day and just kind of comparing notes about what's going on around us. And I'm telling you, just even just the first just the first uh, 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 four chapters were, or um, three chapters there were, got, where Jesus is writing a letter, letter to the seven churches. The seven churches uh, that were of Asia, they're, they, they're just, they're us. They're, it's America. Now, our behaviors are added. I see, you know, I just see, see so much that everything that's around us, that, that is us. So many of the descriptions that he says, uh, I find this good thing, and I find that good thing, but I find this that I have against you. Maybe it's to take a second and go back and just go read Revelations chapter 1, 2, and 3. And kind of find yourself in, in which church that, that really, that the Holy Spirit will really prick your heart and just say, you know what, this is you. I mean, it's kind of cool how Jesus addresses it, you know, like, ah, you did this good and you did that good. And then he follows it right up with the, but I got this against you. I got this. So as we get ready to close. Is your heart ready for what is to come? Or is fear overwhelming you? And there's no way that you're going to like, oh man, if the law passes that I can't go to church, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to die. Or are you, got to do, are, you, are you on your knees praying about the situation and praying that God give you the courage to know the right choice to make? That your God is first in your life. Because many of you have stepped back and God is not first in your life. What if it was that you know what to say that, you know, oh, I pray through the day and I, I'm like, yeah, because you're just talking whatever like this. But have you ever found a place that, you know, at this time in the morning, 
I'm not trying to make it a ritual. I'm trying to make it as a time. There is time. Let's say mom and dad. Mom and dad have a lot of kids, okay? Let's, let's put this a little bit more of a different kind of perspective. Okay? Mom and dad have a lot of kids, and so in that, they got to do a lot of things to keep things, keep the family moving, keep everything happy, and you know, keep everything moving. If everybody's provided for, safe, and then like that. So in that, their relationship has to, at some times, has to be set an appointed time to be able to, it's their time. Whether it's Friday night, late at night, which that probably won't work because the kids there, got, they, got, they don't have to get up for school in the morning, so they're going to want to stay up late. Or it's going to be Saturday morning, might be the best time. Or Friday night date, get a babysitter, things like that. But there has to be that set time. And maybe even at night, to sit, you know, when they get them to bed at a certain time, because they got school in the morning that they sit down, you know what, TV off, let's talk, let's cuddle, let's be together. It's the same picture that God wants with us in a relationship to set a time with Him to say, this is our time. Sometimes it's, you know, it's like maybe God's, you know, I'm going to read this, chap- I'm going to read a chapter every morning, you know, at 5, 5.30, you know, because everybody gets up at 6 and they're often getting up and we're a hustling and bustling and getting to school and to work. Because I'm telling you, your best time, His Word says to seek Him in the morning because the day gets away from you really quick. Do you have a set time that you're going to say? You know, because sometimes you're going to be like, you know, I don't feel like, you know, I feel the Holy Spirit saying today we're just going to read just a verse. We're going to spend most of our time in just prayer and just humbled and worship. Maybe put a little background worship music in and just spending that time worshiping Him. Daniel made it up in his mind. I'm doing it three times a day. I'm going to my place. I'm going to stay, do. I'm going to face Jerusalem, and I'm going to pray to my God and worship Him. Do you do that? Do you? If you don't, I'm going to challenge you to do it. I challenge you to do it. Change some things in your life because what's going to make a difference where you are is your relationship with Him that it increases, intensifies. And people just all of a sudden it's like, man, you just said. You just said, everything comes out your mouth. Everything about Jesus? Yeah. He died for me. Take a picture of this. How would you be, how would you feel if you were standing in the road and you didn't know a bus was coming and was going to plow you over and some dude out of nowhere tackles you and does a barrel roll and saves your life from getting hit and creamed all over the, the, the side of the road. How would you feel towards that guy? Man, you would be indebted to him for the rest of your life. If you was a halfway decent thinking person, that's what you would be. You would be indebted to the, him for saving your life. Jesus did exactly that on the cross. Your sins... It is standing before a holy God is going to send you to a place called hell. God and Jesus did not want that for you because it's not meant for you. But because of your sins, if you stood before God, you would be sentenced to eternity in hell because of your sins. But God says, you know what? Let's, let's put a little something in there to show that we care. A choice. A choice. You choose. Jesus came. He laid down His life to pay the sin debt for you. A gift. He's handing you a gift of eternal life that He would pay that debt for you if you'll just accept it. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? It's a choice it's a choice. Just as, as a believer is right now, it's your choice. You got saved maybe not too long ago. Maybe it was a while ago. I, you know, I don't know. But it's your choice to say, how are you going to serve Him from now on? How are you going to look Him in the eye, the one who died for your sins, and say, I was scared. I didn't want, I didn't want somebody to yell at me for 
following, you know, doing that for Jesus. I don't want people throwing stuff at me for Jesus. I don't want, you know, I, I don't want them calling me names. I, it hurts my feelings when I get called those names. I, I, you think that's going to fly when, you, to, 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 when you're standing before the one who died for you? I, we're going to close. If you bow your heads. As we pray, I'm going to ask you the, is that, that you believe that you're a born-again Christian. I'm going to ask you if you'll just pray the, the prayer of saying, okay, God, help me in my relationship with you and help me be bold. Help me be strong like Daniel. That I will only bow to you and no other God, no other king, no other governmental, uh, whether it's Republican, Independent, or Democrat. Help me not bow. Only bow to you. But maybe today you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're you're not too sure. Maybe today, if you died, you wouldn't you wouldn't go to heaven. Today I want you to pray with me and ask Jesus to save you. Because that's why he died. He died on the cross for your sins. To pay your sin debt that you cannot pay. You cannot be good enough. You don't have enough money. You, don't, you can't work enough. You just you can't do it. It's just not going to happen. But all you got to do is say, you know what? I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he was raised from the dead. And that was the, the gift of eternal life. And I want that. Will you please forgive me of my sin? I accept that gift. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you want to be saved today, you can pray that with me. Father, we just come to you in the precious holy name of Jesus. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for your many blessings. I stand in the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish things where into it is sent, that you will help us be ready to make a difference where we are. A lot of us are saying we're Christians, but we are not making a difference. We are not uplifting the name of Jesus. We are not doing our part to further the kingdom. Nobody can tell the difference in our lives. And, and, and forgive me of that sin against you. That I am hiding my light under a bush. Nobody can see Jesus in me. Forgive me of that. Give me boldness and strength to be a light in a dark place where I am to make a difference. Father, today, those that don't know Jesus and want to be saved, have them pray this with me, saying, Father, by faith, I come to you, asking you to forgive me of my sins, to make me a new person. I believe Jesus is your son, who you gave, you gave, who gave his life, so I could be forgiven and experience your life, a new life. Today I trust Him as my Savior and as my Lord. My life does not belong to me. You paid for it. I give it to you. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I ask you all these things. Amen. Father, hear their prayer of salvation. Give them courage to tell somebody that they ask to be saved today. And be bold and already, already be bold and say, yo, I prayed with that guy, that guy on, uh, on the internet, uh, on that live or on that YouTube channel. I prayed. Father, help them find a good Bible-believing church, preaching church and teaching church. It will draw them closer to you. Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Bless these people right now. In the precious holy name of Jesus, that they will see you and know you better. In all these things I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.